given me something even before Christmas break uh, because he was doing it to me. And that's usually how it works. Uh, he works on you and, and uh, then he tells you to share it with others. So the one thing that the Lord kept giving me um, <clears throat> had to do with codependency. And he kept just saying, uh, I allowed COVID to happen. Why did I allow, why were one of the reasons that I allowed COVID to happen? Because I'm trying to break off anything off of my people that is not for me to get us ready. Get us ready for his return. Get us ready for what's coming. And so, uh, I mean, I've known about a, a spirit of codependency for a long time, but God took me to a deeper place with codependency. You know, when we think about codependency, we think about that as being in a, um, if you're in a drug rehab, don't be codependent with them. They teach you about the codependency, false burdens with somebody that has drug issues. But God said, um, I'm breaking people from codependency with their jobs, with unhealthy codependency with their spouses, with unhealthy codependency with self. See, self can be an ugly thing sometimes when God's trying to take you to a level, you can be codependent with your own self. And why, why does God want to do that? Why does he want to break us free from codependency? Um, because when we have codependency, with something or someone, we can't get close to him. That blocks us because either we become codependent on ourselves to do things or on others to be Jesus for us. Then that ends up putting a false burden. You either put a false burden on somebody for them to be your Jesus or you try to step in and be their Jesus. And none of us are anybody's Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. And so, you know, when people couldn't go into work and you needed a job, God was saying, I'm trying to teach you something. So in this time, in this new season, when 2020 was extremely hard, some of us felt just totally broken, totally distraught, totally confused. God was trying to break us to make us humble because we're living in a day and time where we have to be humble as Christians, not doormats, but we have to be humble. And so if he's trying to break you of some kind of codependency, you know, a lot of times codependency comes in too as um, you know, I'm, I'm codependent on my husband to make me feel good every day and make me happy. Well, that puts him in the position of Jesus. And he just can't do that some days. There's days that he has a bad day when I have a bad day. And I have to go to the Lord instead of him and not expect that from him. And vice versa. Sometimes we put those um, burdens on our kids and expect them to do and be things that they're not because we either put a false burden on them or we become codependent to make us feel good about who we are. And so in this time, in this next season, in 2021, ask God what He is trying to break you free from. What are you codependent with? What if there's something that the Lord either took from you or is trying to take from you and you're still trying to hold on to? It's painful. But the reason why he's doing that is he's been showing me, remember he got his people out of Egypt. But remember they couldn't get to the promised land because they wanted to go back to Egypt. They kept wanting things that God had set them free from. And God's trying to do the same thing with us right now. And this is 2021. What is something that today you need to go home and you need to repent of that you've been codependent with that has been your identity?
because God's trying to break it. It's not so he can take it away from you and give you something bad in return. God, usually when he's trying to break you free of something, he's got something so much better that you'll go, golly, why did I hold on to that for so long? Why was I so prideful and rebellious that I held on to that? It was actually painful. I'll tell you something that the Lord showed me probably about two years ago. <clears throat> when I start becoming codependent with something, somebody or something, I start finding myself being very angry and agitated. And all of a sudden, that will be my check to ask the Lord, who or what have I become codependent with? Because we're supposed to have a mindset of Christ and be at peace at all times. When the world's chaotic, what is it that you're taking on that God never meant for you? You know, he told us to bear one another's burdens. He didn't say become a pack mule. So when you bear somebody's burdens, you help them. But then it's their job to take care of the rest. That's right. And so when we... When we do that and we, we take on too much, we step in the place of Jesus and they really can't get to where Jesus wants them to be. So just remember that and ask the Lord. One of the other things the Lord, and you know, I, I had a bunch of questions I wrote down one day when I was sick and you know, God just kept giving me all these questions. So these are questions to ask yourself. Um, do you have boundaries? What are boundaries? Did Jesus set boundaries? Does Jesus have boundaries with people? Does Jesus show us how to set boundaries? Does codependency and false burdens keep us from being alone with the Lord? So think about those things. Does Jesus have boundaries with us? He sure does. Just look up scripture. God will show you. He sure does. Why does the Lord have boundaries with us? He loves us. He's always there for us. But when we're not doing right, He allows us to go to the pit so we can get closer to Him. One other thing I want to talk about. <clears throat> um, Maybe some of you all have heard of this, and maybe some of you all have not. Um, is there what's called a spirit of offense? We've all had it. And what's crazy is, is in this time that we're living in, a spirit of offense, <laughs> it's just running rampant. The Lord showed me about a spirit of offense years ago. It even talks about a spirit of offense in Scripture. It talks about it in Matthew 10, 34 through 35, John 15, 19. Even Jesus said that he came not to bring peace, but that the gospel would bring division. Why? Because the world is offended by it, and we are not of this world. What do we, come, what do we get offended from? We all get offended. We've all been offended. Did Jesus get offended when he went into the temple and all that junk was going on? He sure did. And he was mad. And he had righteous anger. So it's okay to be offended sometimes. It's what you do with the spirit of offense. Do you hold it in your heart and do you keep being offended and you're always keeping a record of wrongs? When that spirit of offense comes in and you let it stay, a spirit of offense doesn't do anything but cause bitterness. Right. Then what does bitterness turn into? Anger. Then rage. Then from rage comes murder. Lonnie's well, saying it. <laughs> so ask the Lord... What, what offends me? Okay, when we see the riots going on and all the looting and bad stuff, that should offend us. That is really ugly and really bad. When Jesus is being mocked and being talked about, 
that should offend us. But what are we going to do with it? But, but where, where it comes into the church and into Christian people, a spirit of offense will keep every record of wrong. And you never can do nothing right. And then that ends up causing disunity in your family, in the church, just in your life. You cannot, if you carry a spirit of offense... You cannot move forward with the destiny that God's called you into. God will not bless you when you hold on to that offense. Love keeps no record of wrong. Should you have a healthy boundary with somebody that's constantly doing bad to you and offending you? Sure, but you got to forgive them. So today, something I'm going to do, I want to say a prayer, then I want Mandy to come up here and pray. But I'm going to say a prayer, and we're going to ask the Lord today, and and I don't need to know, that's between you and God, but today as I pray, anything that I've just said is not from me, it's from the Lord, because He's been putting it on my heart for a while. You lay that codependency, false burden, and offense down at the foot of the cross today. Go home and ask the Lord if there's anything else. Just repent of it. Lay it down to Jesus. He's the one that takes that stuff and he removes your sins as far as the east is from the west. He has got such good plans for us. We can't hold on to this stuff. It's exhausting. Really, when you hold on to it and you try to do it, it is exhausting for all of us. I mean, it really is. And it runs us on a rabbit trail. And that's what the enemy wants to do. God has a plan for our destiny to go like this and do this. And the enemy goes, I want to do like I did with um, with the slaves. I want to just keep them over here. Because here's a promised land. But while they're in you know, offense and codependency and all this stuff, I'm going to keep them right here. Poor Moses. <laughs> so we want to get to the promised land. All of us do. So today when I pray, you lay down whatever the Lord is showing you with what I just said. And so, Lord, we come to you right now, Lord. Um, we are living in the days and times, Lord, where um, as Christians, there's all kinds of stuff flying around, trying to hit us all the time, Lord. And so, Lord, help us to be um, quick to forgive, Lord. And so that spirit of offense, Lord, when it comes in, Lord, I ask that you give your people wisdom and discernment, where it crept in, who gave it permission, how it showed up, Lord, and to just tell that spirit of offense to leave in Jesus' name, Lord. I ask that we would be repentant of our sins, Lord, that we would keep no record of wrongs, Lord, in Jesus' name, that we will be here for each other, Lord, to spur each other on with love and with truth. And so any spirit of offense would leave all of us today in the name of Yeshua, Lord, that spirit of offense has no power or no legal right unless we give it legal right. And so, Lord, we repent today. I repent for every time that I let a spirit of offense come in and offend me and keep me from walking in my destiny. And so I'm sorry, Lord. Show us, Lord, in the next couple of days, weeks, how that spirit operates so we can be so humble that when people get around us, they do want to touch our garment because we're so cleaned up that we do not let a spirit of offense hinder our walk with you. And so, Lord, I also ask for this um, codependency where we're codependent. We're codependent on so many things, Lord. You've been breaking us and breaking us and breaking us and breaking us of this codependency. You've been breaking us of codependency with our jobs, with friends, with family, with people, with just so many situations. You've been knocking at our door. and We're so sorry where we've been rebellious, Lord, and been disobedient. Lord, I know that this is the season and the year that you want to walk us in a new light, a new level, to where all that old stuff, we're not codependent with our old self. You've got a new person that you want to revive and use 
for something so big that none of us can understand in these days and times. And so today I speak to a spirit of codependency and false burdens, and I say spirit of uh, codependency and false burdens, you have no more legal right to God's people. You have no more power over God's people. In the name of Jesus, I break off a spirit of codependency and false burdens off God's people. Lord, I ask that the fire of God would cleanse us right now of any false burdens or codependency, any fear that's rooted in any of those things, any generational codependency or false burdens. Lord, would break today in the name of Jesus, and we will not be prideful. We will humbly submit those things to you when we go home while we're here, Lord, and we'll just release those and give those back to you and say, Lord, thank you for taking on codependency. Thank you for taking on burdens that I could not bear that were too heavy of a load. I thank you, Lord, that you can give me the shalom peace. Lord, that you died for. And I can give all those things with all those people back to you and say, Lord, you are still on the throne and you're in control and you've got this. And so I humbly submit all my junk to you today and I ask for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, so I was sitting back there, and I've been in a lot of confusion this morning. So we all know confusion is not from God. So when he asked me to get up here and pray or say something. Um, so even when I get up here, a lot of the times I just feel like I'm supposed to say this. I don't feel like I have it all together, and I get into confusion, and fear gets me up. So, this morning fear has been hitting me up, so I'm going to bind that up in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to bind up any antichrist spirit or anything that's trying to take over my voice, um, and I just ask the Holy Spirit to take over my voice. So, something for me that um, the Lord worked on me over the last two months or so is being judgmental and hypocritical. Um, one confirmation actually came from Jacob back there. Because um, he walked up to me and was like, you're hypocritical. And I know he was joking, but I was like, thank you for giving me confirmation on what I'm supposed to say this morning. <laughs> I was said, quit judging. Judging, judging. Okay, judgmental, hypocritical, same thing, pretty much. So he gave me confirmation. Um, but that is personally something that I want to stand before all of you all in the church and for Jesus and repent of, is being hypocritical and judgmental. Um, you know, we can walk into a room like this, um, and even this morning, I call myself because I'm going to be vulnerable. You can walk into a room like this, and you can have a thought come in, and you can think something about somebody else. And it's one thought, but if you have the one thought, then the next thought, and the next thought, and the next thought. And what God showed me is then you allow and open the door to a spirit of betrayal. So at that point, you allow something to come in, turns into 30 or 40 thoughts, and you can sit here and judge me all day and think I'm hypocritical all day. But the moment you do that, you're opening the, your heart to the same thing that you're proclaiming that I'm doing. And there's a lot of things that I go through. There's a lot of persecution that my family goes through. There's a lot of things that are said about me that I know that are said about me that are not good that I have to personally fight and battle through on my own along with Jesus because when I stand and talk about Jesus or when I do this or that, there's a lot of people telling me what I'm doing is wrong. And I can guarantee you that when I'm sitting back there like I was this morning, I'm having a conversation with Jesus trying to figure out so I don't please displease Him, not any of you in this room. I'm trying to figure out what I need to say or what I need to do because I don't want to let God down. I don't want to be hypocritical when I get up here and speak. I don't want to be judgmental. I don't want to have sin. So I felt like I needed to remind you that even me standing up here, it was hard for me to get up here this morning. I had a battle back there with, God, I don't feel worthy. 
I don't feel good enough. I feel like I've had too much sin that I need to repent of. So I had to sit back there and repent of a lot of things and have a conversation with Jesus because I think I allowed myself to open the door to a spirit of betrayal. And so God showed me that. So I feel like this morning I'm going to just pray a prayer that we're going to take that off of our church, the spirit of betrayal. And I'm just going to read this verse to you um, because I always like to have verses to back it up. But I know you guys have heard this, but Matthew 7 1 through 5 says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will clearly see remove the speck from your brother's eye. So, I mean, Jesus is very simple right there. Look at yourself. You walk into a room full of people. We all do it. You walk into a room full of people and this thought comes in and you immediately start judging somebody. Immediately you're being hypocritical and you're judging them. So take those thoughts captive because that thought can turn into a spirit of betrayal and you can turn your back on somebody. And then guess what? You can damage somebody for the rest of their life because as Christians, when you betray somebody, that may be something they're still dealing with 10 years down the road that you've done to cause that to happen. So I'm just going to pray. So Lord, I just pray right now and I just ask that, um, I ask for forgiveness just for a spirit of betrayal, a spirit of judgmental, Lord, um, a, a hypocrite spirit, Lord. And I just pray against any spirit that has tried to come over our church, Lord. I cancel any um, spirits of an antichrist spirit that maybe we open the door to. And I ask God that you would flood this church with the Holy Spirit through every one of us, through each one of us, God. Um, I pray that you would fill us with the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that we would be more conscious when we get defensive or someone does something, God, I pray that we'd be more conscious of that, Lord. And I pray that we would turn and we would repent, Lord. And that we would not open the door to the enemy's lies or that spirit of betrayal, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for protection over our church. I pray for protection over our pastor. And I pray, God, that you would just be with him to bring a word, Lord, that is honoring to you and Holy Spirit led this morning.